Okay, so uh, the first part uh, of this crystallization uh, experiment, as I had already discussed in the instructions, it is in the multiple parts. The first part, what we are going to do is to learn how to siliconize a cover slip. Now, what I'm going to tell today is about the process about um, which I have been using personally in all these years for uh, setting up crystallization. That doesn't necessarily mean that you should be following only this particular protocol. Yeah, this is the protocol which I am comfortable with and which I know it works, right? Every lab has their own way of siliconizing cover slips. They have their own uh, different sets of chemicals what they use their own different ways of setting up crystallization, their own different ways of cleaning up the cover slips. Uh, but we are going to stick to what uh, I had been using all these years, right? Now the first things first, why siliconize a cover slip, right? Now what is our cover slip? I'll show you in a sec. You get a box something like this and you get these uh, glass discs. So I'm taking out one of the discs. We have to take an effort to show it uh, on the camera that you should be able to see it. I'm not sure if it is visible, but I'll try to give you the background of my hand that it is not visible. So let me come closer. Yeah. So this is a glass cover slip, right? Yeah. L let me try to have some dark background, right? Let me have a dark background behind it so you can see that it is visible. No, it's not. So that's a wrong background. Can I have something dark? Yeah. Is it visible? Yeah? No. Like this? Yeah. So, okay. So it works good. So that's a glass cover slip. Very thin one, if you would see, you hardly can uh, sense the thickness of this cover slip. The problem is, if you set up, yeah, if I turn this around like a, uh, like flat, right, let me draw it a bit thicker so that you can see. And if you uh, use this cover slip straight away to set up crystallization, then the drop profile would be something like this it will spread out, right? It will spread out. And the contact surface will be, uh, the contact surface area between the drop and the cover slip will be quite high, right? Will be quite high. But if you set, uh, siliconize this cover slip, by siliconization essentially we mean what? We mean that we make this surface more hydrophobic. Yeah, remember like how it feels like if you can sprinkle some of the oil on the water surface, how does it look? It forms those droplets, yeah? If you siliconize it, you are making uh, this surface more hydrophobic in nature and the drop is more spherical in nature. right? It's more spherical in nature like this. Yeah. Can I fill this drop so that it is more visible? That way it's more spherical. So can you see the stark difference between the two drops? Non-siliconized, so I will call it as NS and this is my siliconized cover slip which I am calling it as S here, right? Now, the, as you can see, the contact area between the drop and the cover slip is minimal when you siliconize a particular cover slip, right? What's the, uh, the advantage here? You get least interference from the surface of your cover slip, right? And this is what is required. You want, uh, there's, uh, you want no interference and people to, negate this uh, no in interference, they also try to do crystallization in space, right? If you can Google it and see, there had been uh, attempts which astronauts take the protein to the uh, space, in the space shuttles to the space and then they try to do in <coughs> the complete weightlessness condition to get a perfect round spherical drops, right? 
but we cannot go to the space, so we will stick to our siliconization process. Now, what I am going to show you today is like how we are uh, doing this siliconization, right? Can we shift to the uh, uh, our next bench where we are going to do this? Right. So the problem is your hands can get dirty um, here. So your uh, cover slips, if you handle it this way, they are very dirty, greasy. You have this all the organic oils uh, released by your skin. And if you handle your cover slips this way, they are quite greasy in nature. And also during the production of these cover slips, there will be some uh, gre uh, greasy uh, stuff or residues or residual things which gets uh, stuck on this surface that needs to be removed. And for doing this, what, what are we going to do? We are going to give them nice cleaning process. So for this uh, cleaning process, what we have here, we have a water bath sonicator, right? And it makes quite a lot of noise. So if uh, you can turn it on, Mayuresh, if you can turn it on, uh, over here and also turn it on over here. See, it makes quite a lot of noise, yeah. And Rupesh, if you could uh, zoom in over here, can you see that it uh, passes those ripples through this uh, water with this uh, uh, sonication sound? And then these ripples will be felt by the cover slips which are there in the liquid and that's how the dirt gets dislodged, right? Now, henceforth, whenever I'm going to handle this cover slip, I'm going to use the gloves, right? Nice clean pair of gloves are required when are, whenever you are handling the cover slips. So let's do that, right? Here I have beakers, yeah? So now depending upon uh, how many cover slips are to be cleaned, you can have many beakers and you have to add only few cover slips here. So you see here there are so many cover slips and then this is a beaker. What I am going to have in a beaker is distilled water, yeah. You fill it in distilled water up to say 200 ml, right. And I personally always prefer to add one at a time, you drop it, yeah. Maybe you can pick up a couple of them, like a bunch, but don't drop the entire bunch in one go, please drop one at a time, like this, right. So I had put only few here for the demonstration purpose. So they are there, they almost disappear in water and then you put it, right. So such kind of sonication, I uh, personally prefer to give it for nice five minutes, right? Nice five minutes. I gave this sonication. It's very noisy, very irritating. Yeah. And uh, you, your colleagues, if you're uh, cleaning these cover slips, your colleagues might be quite irritated. But yeah, that's science and that you have to do. Yeah. So then you give a nice thorough clean over here. <coughs> Once it is done, yeah, can, uh, can you stop it for a second here, right? So you decant it, slowly decant the water off the beaker. Make sure that the cover slips are not going along with the water. You slowly decant it. Yeah, my cover slips are coming closer, so every time I allow them to go back, yes. It, they may they are making some noise here in the beaker. Yeah, so see these cover slips they keep coming up. So you decant it. No, oh. again. Again, see as and when you are proceeding, you are uh, completing every step, your cover slips are becoming more and more precious, 
So please make sure that you don't lose them. It's going to be a very hard work if you would realize, right? Don't lose them. Yeah. Don't lose your cover slips. Keep going, keep going and it's all gone. The cover slips are back in the beaker. Then what I'm going to do, I'm going to give a, a nice thorough uh, wash again in the sonicator with this absolute alcohol. Yeah. Is this open? Yes, it's open. So I'll use this bottle and it is for the demonstration purpose. So I'm using only a little amount. Now if you are having more cover slips, you can have more. You put it through and then you start it again. Again, a five minute procedure, right? Again, a five minute procedure, what you do? Yeah, Rupesh, if you could zoom in here in the beaker so they can see like uh, what kind of bubbles and ripples are going through <coughs> uh, uh, the beaker water, uh, beaker ethanol here. Yeah, can you catch those ripples so that everybody can see? Yes, you got them? Yeah, so now because of these ripples, the dirt is getting dislodged. So initially we had given them a wash with water so that whatever is the water soluble impurities gets dislodged. With ethanol you get rid of all the greasy stuff, the organic material and you are going to do one more set of this cycle. That means you are going to repeat the after the 5 minutes of this ethanol wash, you are going to decant the ethanol. Keep it aside, you are not going to use that ethanol again, the dirty ethanol. You can use it for the other cleaning purpose for making like 70% ethanol. But then you are again going to give a water wash uh, for uh, this and then again going uh, to give an ethanol wash, right? Once you had given them ethanol wash, so I am stopping here, I am not uh, giving uh, the two washes because we already had done some things. Can I have those? Yeah. So you really have to spread them. Can we have a little bit space? Yeah, you can have a piece of aluminum foil and you take out this aluminum, uh, th these cover slips from the beaker and then you spread them so that they are not sticking to each other because if you would see, if I can show you here, if I take them out like this, they are sticking to each other. See, it's a bunch, right? So, and then we need to dry them, right? We need to dry them, let's say at 50 degrees. So, you have to separate them and spread them around. Uh, mind you, you always are wearing gloves. You are not handling these cover slips without gloves. You don't want to make them dirty with the greasiness of your hands, okay? You spread them and then you dry them, right? You dry them so that they are like now ready for siliconization, right? You dry them at what temperature? At 50 degrees. And you would see like in half an hour they are dry and ready, okay? Then what do we do next? So we already have other steps being done. I personally use this Sigma coat, right? Now after seeing this video, if you are uh, switching to Sigma coat, then my um, appeal to the Sigma people will be, they should start giving me the commission. Yeah, openly <laughs> said in this video. So this is the Sigma coat what I use, right? Not very expensive. I use like uh, 1 is to uh, 20, right? You take 1 ml of this and 19 ml of ethanol, pure ethanol, right? AR grade is good idea, not LR grade, right? The AR grade ethanol you use, so you do the 20 fold dilution of this sigma coat, right? And then what do we do? You take out these. Uh, uh, say, can we have that 1 is to 20 solution here? That's my 1 is to 20 solution. It's already done. It's not labeled. Can I have a marker so that I can label it? 
Yeah, give me a label please. Mm. Yes, so we have a sigma code solution and the ratio 1 is to 20. So that is for your reference. So this is our sigma code solution 1 is to 20 dilution, right? 1 is to 20. What we are going to do here? So once you have those dried cover slip, we already have those dried cover slip for the demonstration purpose. We already have them here. They are nice and dry after drying the ethanol. This is bit of a longer, long procedure and it, it requires some patience. You have to take these tweezers, right? I prefer the plastic ones because with the metal ones, if you are not careful and if you apply too much of pressure holding these cover slips, so they might just simply crack. Right, they might just simply crack. So what you are going to do? You are going to take these dried cover slips, right? So dried cover slips and then see, you might not be able to see these cover slips, but uh, please believe like there are plenty of cover slips here. So let me collect them for you so that you know that there are plenty of cover slips on this aluminum foil, nice and dry, like this. Yeah, can you see them now? They are making a bulk now, coming together, right? All of them are dried, so you can dry them on a flat aluminum foil. What we are going to do, before we, I start dipping these cover slips into the Sigma coat solution, I have to make this fluted aluminum foil sheets. So what do you do? You take the sheets, you start making those channels, the fluted channels here, right? In origami, you make uh, such kind of stuff. So you have to make these channels here, right? Have you got those channels nicely? Yeah, okay. And then you have these cover slips. So you open the Sigma coat right <clears throat> and try to hold this cover slip from the edge close to the edge not in the middle because you definitely want the middle part of the cover slip to be nicely siliconized so try to hold them from the edge yeah as you would see this edge is will not be involved in setting up any drops so it's okay if the edge remains so you try to be as uh, far away from the center as possible you dip it, oh, I dropped it, right? So maybe I'll do it by hand. I dip it and take it out, right? So the excess, you try to get it back here. And then in the vertical position, you just keep it here. Are you able to see the cover slip? It is so very difficult to see them in this background. Yeah, so I'll show you with my hand against the blue background. Against the blue background, are you able to see? No, right? Against this, are you able to see? Let me come it closer. That's the cover slip, yeah. So, and I am just putting them here in the vertical position. I had made these channels, right? Small aluminum walls, aluminum foil walls, which I had done. So, and you have to put them in the erect position, right? And this is why I said it is time consuming because you are going to pick up one cover slip at a time and going to dip it in the solution, right? And then you are going to put the cover slip. Pick the cover slip, dip it in the solution, get rid of the excess solution into the tube itself, not anywhere else. And then keep putting like this, then in the next channel, in the third channel, fourth channel and likewise. What we are going to do next? We are going to <coughs> put them, right? We are going to uh, put them in an oven at 50 degrees, right? Usually like two, three hours of uh, baking is good enough. But if it is like evening, by, by the time you had finished its evening, you put them at uh, oven at 40 degrees and leave it overnight so that you, have, you will get nice baked uh, cover slips in the morning when you return. Now, what I am wanting to uh, uh, show you now, 
post siliconization yeah post siliconization your cover after baking your cover slips are ready for setting up the drops right now can i have one non siliconized cover slip right so that's my non siliconized cover slip which i just took it out from the box if you would see by just by looking at it you won't be able to say what's the difference which one is siliconized and which one is not right which one is not then happens what um, so what's the difference if you cannot see it physically i'm going to set up some drops here and then i'm going to show you what has happened like but before i do that can i make a little bit space here yeah let me put it on the sides yeah so i mixed up the two cover slips so i have to uh, get the non siliconized and the siliconized cover slip one more time and also can i have a marker yeah so that's my non siliconized cover slip for our reference i am going to put some mark on it let me see if i am able to write it yeah yes can you see i am making a dot on my non siliconized uh, cover slip and i would need one siliconized cover slip which is here right so on my siliconized cover slip i am not putting any dot right so there is a bit of spillage here let me move this chalk on that side can i have some tissue please so that i can make my workplace clean so i'm just cleaning my place right right and when you are working like this so please be very careful about your hair hygiene don't have dandruff in your hair because dandruff crystallizes very beautifully right so you might say your protein has given you crystals but when you put it on the diffractometer it's all dandruff so please make sure that and if you have too much of dandruff please cover your head right or beard maybe but the mask is useful in covering the beard and i'm going to demonstrate to you these drops using some water right i have some water here and this is like p2 uh, pipette so i had set it up at 1 microliter right so first i'm going to set up drops in the siliconized cover slip i'm going to set up one drop one microliter drop here right and when you are setting up the drop especially for the uh, the crystallization generally what you do you do the first uh, say press and then you do the second press in a pipette right whenever you are doing the crystallization you just do the first press you don't do the second press by doing this you are going to uh, you, you are uh, going to put air bubbles into the protein drop which you don't want which you don't want right so let me clean up my tip of course whenever when we will be setting up the pro, uh, pro, protein crystallization we won't be doing this kind of cleaning up of the the tip uh, it is like one time use so you are going to take some liquid like this and you are going to put it in the middle of the cover slip just one press right i can also put the second drop just i'm making it bit bulky third drop fourth and fifth yeah you are not setting up drops of 5 microliters unless you really want to do it when you are setting up crystallization 
one microliter drops are good enough. I, am, uh, I have set up five microliter drop so that it is more visible on the camera, right? Now you would see, I will try to be gentle with this cover slip, yeah, <coughs> if you would see the drop is quite round, are you able to see that? You can see that bulge, right? Let us go to the board, this kind of scenario, this kind of scenario where you are seeing this bulge and this is what I am wanting to show you here. Can you see a nice bulge over here on this cover slip because this uh, drop is being set up on the siliconized surface, right? Now I am going to do the same thing on the non-siliconized surface, right? In front of you I had put a dot on the non-siliconized one, see I am just putting the first drop, right, 2 microliters now, right, and if <coughs> you can see it is more spread out, is more spread out. We had put 5 microliters over there, so let me also put 3 more microliters here, so then the difference will be very evident. So that is your th uh, microliter number 3, 4 and 5, right. So see 5 microliters I put it over there and 5 microliters I put it on this non-siliconized cover slip see the difference. Is it really evident? Or can we do it against the background? Yeah. See, that's my siliconized cover slip. Yeah, and that's my non-siliconized cover slip. Right? I think my hands are there. Mayurish, can you do one thing? Hold it from the other side. That's the siliconized cover slip, so that the blockage of my hand is not there. Can you see the difference now? Yeah, zoom it quite nicely. Yeah, that's quite flat, spread out, and there is a nice drop. Can you bring Mayurish that uh, cover slip close to the camera? Yeah. Right. So I'm not very sure if uh, you are able to see, able to see that difference. 
in the siliconized cover slip you get a uh, quite a perfect round drop and here you are getting the broad the drop is being spread out so you see the contact between the the drop liquid and the siliconized cover slip is more in case where you have no siliconization being done and it is quite less because the drop has become quite roundish because of the hydrophobic nature of my cover slip it has become more spherical in nature with the minimal contact area touching the surface of my glass right so it is essential uh, when you are setting up any crystallization that you are siliconizing the cover slip now in the next part so now we are done our silica, our cover slips are ready now we are in our next part we are going to set up crystallization of lysozyme which is a model protein system to teach uh, crystallization right so until the next uh, uh, video it's goodbye from me